folks. We're back. Welcome back. It's been about a month since our last chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Stephen Hagen. I'm Mark Aderberg. And we are uh, two of the uh, council of the St. Lotus VRD, uh, two of four. And, but we're also your regular content producers who uh, try to, you know, we push hard along with hyphenated to some of the people on the Discord community to make VRD bigger than just the event. Um, to kind of keep a community going, and we think that these are fun and interesting ways to discuss uh, the format as a whole. Absolutely. So today uh, we we have we're gonna normally kind of when we do these we do kind of a set by set thing, um, but we have two sets, and we're not really gonna go set by set. We're gonna break it down a little different this time and talk about some of the things that have happened, and then some of the potential cards out of those sets. Hey, hyphenated. Hey. Um, so we have AFR, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, mm-hmm. and we have Midnight Hunt. So we have two sets um, that are, in the grand scheme of thing, is we've moved from fire design, right? So like we had a lot of sets, like we had Thro- uh, we had um, Eldrain, and we had um, the one with Underworld, the Go Back to Theros, yep. that had just like such powerful stuff in it for standard sets. And, and this is not counting the Modern Horizon sets, which are a different bird altogether. But those sets produce so many powerful cards that were. This is a change of pace because they've they've backed away from fire design, and so we're probably seeing less guaranteed play cards, right? But that doesn't mean that there's not some interesting things to discuss uh, about deeper cards mm-hmm. and some fringe possibilities, right? Uh, so one of the first things we need to do though is I'm going to shut up and let Mark talk about. Uh, one of the updated rule switches that we're going to do for this next uh, VRD. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I think this is pretty close to uh, what a lot of the other VRDs are. There's always a little bit of flex, and we like to make a bigger deal about the rules than I think that they actually are. Uh, but one of the uh, <laughs> one of the uh, exciting one of the exciting changes we're going to be making for this next one is number one, you get as many wastes as you want. This is a pretty a standard one that goes in line with. Uh, with what Hyphen and a lot of the online VRD has been doing, where you can get any of the five basic lands, uh, but you also get uh, you also can get access to wastes if you want to. So uh, it, the hope here is that maybe it can push Eldrazi a little bit. Uh, we haven't seen very much of them at all, no. um, and it would be cool to see uh, it'd be cool to see kind of some more avenue from there. If somebody really did want to play it, but didn't want to have to draft all the base all the non basics. Right. Uh, the second rule I think is a bigger one. This is that. Uh, traditionally we've said you can draft snow covered lands but you get four copies for each one you draft this time we're changing it up you draft one snow covered island and you have as many snow covered islands as you want similarly for persistent petitioners or rev- or relentless rats so the big change is just going to be we're going to see all of the we're going to see if if anybody playing uh playing uh the any number of cards uh is going to have an impact uh it it doesn't feel that different. I think that most of these yeah. cards are uh, are pretty. I think it's pretty fringy. Exactly. The, the ones that will actually have an impact are snow covered. I think I can. There's a good chance that somebody will actually draft a snow covered land this time, which would be pretty neat to see. Right. And we'll talk later about a card that um, will that snow covered pick might be very meaningful for. Right. So snow covered island's only been picked two times of the fifty. It's been legal, uh, and that's just like not a lot of play. And it'd be cool to give those lands a time to shine in the sun. So. Right. And that was one we went back and forth on. Like, I, I was kind of knee-jerk reaction against it. But as I started thinking through it, I was like, is there anything that's going to be utterly broken by doing that? And I just couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. So yep. I, I, uh, I, I, I conceded my vote and said, let's go for it. And if it messes something up, we'll go back. That's what we did with Arcane Ether Searcher or whatever it was, right? Exactly. It, it broke things. And we said, okay, we'll fix it. Yep, the Draft Matters cards, obviously, last time after coming back from, uh, from quarantine, we opted to say... You're actually picking cards. You're not drafting cards. So other than deal broker, uh, and pretty much everything from those draft matters cards doesn't actually work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arkham's Astrolabe is a good chance. A good call, Lightning Bolted. And I think there's some other cards that I'm have my fingers crossed that we could see some play. Uh, but it'll be interesting. Um, Texas Ranger points out the Elvish Clan Caller actually did see play, and that's one of the ones that we have. We have a rule that uh, self tutoring cards uh, are are able to when you pick one of them you get four copies. Yeah, and that was a new addition last time, and it came up and was clutch out of the board. I yep. lost to them. So, <laughs> but, but at the same time, it also wasn't so overpowering that no, it, it did delivered the entire draft. Um, obviously, Mason did go on and win with that with right. that deck, but I I cannot imagine that. I mean, they were uh, sideboard, so obviously it correct. wasn't the, the the key to everything, but they were good. 
in the matches he wanted them. Yeah, so uh, exciting times all around. Uh, but yeah, we have we have some new rules. We have some new cards coming in, and the next VRD is Saturday. Yeah, it's so, very soon. Uh, we brought in a couple new bodies. We were trying to bring in some more. We had uh, Mason's coming back to defend, which yep. is good. Um, he he took the crown from Chicago last time. Uh, and of course, if you know it all about the, like local area politics and or sports stuff, Chicago, St. Louis always has a little bit of a mm-hmm. extra fun friction there. Um, so that's always a good time. Uh, we did have someone coming in from New York, but they had to cancel out due to personal stuff, which would have been interesting. Yep. Uh, but we do have some new bodies coming in. Well, and we have two from Chicago this time. Again. Oh, we, we have two from Chicago again. Yeah, and... Chicago's coming down as well. With, okay. Uh, and that'll be a good time. So. And then we have some returners. Um, you know, we, we try to cycle some bodies out. Um, but uh, Brandon Curry will be back. Brandon always has interesting decks. Uh, we were trying to put him on the bench for once because he's been in a lot, but uh, <laughs> but he's always entertaining. So for from Absolutely. my point of view as an admin, I love Brandon being in. But I just we like to try to keep fresh faces. Absolutely, same same here. Uh, and yeah, Brand, Brandon's going to do a great job. We have some. Uh, we have Kevin Freeman who's been on uh, who's been helping out logistics a little yeah. bit. Like he try his hand at a draft. And our own Eric Levine is going to probably tapping in yep. and playing it, playing a match. So last time you were able to try it, try your hand. Yep, I was uh, able to come back in, and Eric has not been in since number two. I want to say. Um, was it? Yeah, it was number two. Yeah, right. so he and I debuted in two. Um, that's where we both got involved, mm-hmm. and uh, we both fought over artifact decks. Uh, Eric, I, I, Eric, like me, likes to dig deep and look around for you know the different cards. So I, I expect some interesting stuff there. He's got a very deep knowledge of the game. And should be a should be a pretty good time. So yeah, I, I imagine he's not going to go for one of the like big comboy blue decks, uh, but I don't know. We'll see what he does. Yeah, it's, it's a wide open field. So uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's talk some cards then. Um, so let's start off with what are what has been played, right? So we have basically, um, to our knowledge, we have two VRDs since AFR dropped. Yep. Ours have St. Lotus. The last St. Lotus happened right after. And then we just had one online um, that has been wrapping up uh, through hyphenated uh, online in the Discord. And we have four AFR cards that I have found that has been that have been drafted. Uh, three in ours, and then one in the online one. So this first one was in the online one. Uh, and I think it's a really good pick. It was one that had not occurred to me, uh, but let's bring it up. And that is... Uh, oh. Search for check for traps. Sorry, we uh, check for traps. Yeah. So, so to be clear, there's another draft that I think is either very close to done or done. I think their matches might still be finishing. That is also ongoing. Uh, so we're gonna have some more data coming in here uh, to help ninth seed out for us. But yeah, check for traps is one that uh, that did see play in in the first of those drafts. We yeah. don't have all the data yet for them. But. So um, this card is very comparable to Agonizing Remorse, uh, which Elaine argues is the probably the fourth best discard spell, she says. Um, it is target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an on land from it. Exile that card. If it's an instant or sorcery or instant or a card with flash, they lose a life. Otherwise, you lose a life. Mm-hmm. And the life loss is pretty marginal. It doesn't yeah. particularly matter. The exile of a non-land card is incredibly strong. So obviously, the comparison you made was agonize your remorse. Uh, that one it allows you to hit their graveyard, which I think is a slight advantage. But right. this one doesn't necessarily always use, lose you the life. So. Right. So uh, Jay Chims uh, had this card. Uh, he had thought seize. He had agonizing remorse. He had check for traps, and he had mind twist. So those were his four in his discard suite. And I think he finished five and two. Uh, I want to say in that one. Sure. Um, so I, I think this is a pretty solid discard card and just gives the strong discard strategies a little bit of variety. Um, you know, if, if some of your other good ones get grabbed up, you could grab this one and, and that plays strong. Seems great. And obviously in the last uh, the last St. Lotus, we saw some ridiculous amount of uh, black hate getting taken very early. Yeah. So. Well, I know in the, I know there was one other deck. I know um, Ever, had, who went 6-1, and one, had 4-5 to five discard spells himself in this one. Wow. He was white-black. And he had a lot, so uh, discard was a, a powerful, you know, powerful strategy. Absolutely, another powerful strategy. Our next three all, the time. all were in our last St. Louis, right, which was right after AFR came out. And mm-hmm. I can say from my own games that all of these played a role, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think this one um, was in Brandon Curry's deck, and it was brutal against a lot of people. Um, the resolution of it, uh, you know, is just so hard in a forty-card deck. Especially against some of the lower cost, like elves, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like my deck, it ate it alive. Uh, well, at least two of the games I played against him. 
the fact that you can't I, I once cast a veil of summer against this for not realizing it's each opponent so it didn't do anything right right uh the fact that it exiles the fact that it doesn't target i mean there's just so much going on here being um, a sorcery is the only big draw on this yeah card, so right but yeah no it, it, it exiles a lot of cards especially in this format where the average cmc in a deck is probably somewhere by two or three it's yeah. not not very high um and then the uh, let's go to Circle of Dreams Druid next. Yeah, from uh, Mason yeah. hanging out with us. And so this was a part of the Elves deck. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a two one for three, uh, but it is a second guy's cradle. Uh, I think this deck. I think this is a role player. I think that it is good in the Elves deck. Um, I don't think it's really good anywhere else. Right. What is the uh, like three land of war elves stapled together card? Land of war. Yep. Emissary. That's where I was. <laughs> uh, I'm basically wondering, is this card... Th this card seems better than that, but I don't yeah. know how much better it is than that card. Lanawar Tribe. I think it's a lot better. Saying, no. is it? Okay. You think this, this card will tap for more than three a lot of times? I think the majority of the time, yeah. Okay. I, there's, I don't think there's enough heavy early removal to... By the time when you drop it, when you're going to be able to tap it, I, I, you know, I don't think enough people have that early removal to make it worthwhile. And then late game, obviously, it's just better, you know. Yeah, that is reasonable. Uh, let's see where Lanawar Tribe got has if it's ever been taken. If I can spell it correctly, Lanawar is always a weird word. No, nope, never, been, never been picked. So, uh, yeah, Circle of Dream Druids obviously d did did well. Uh, it won it won the VRD, uh, and yeah, we can let uh, Mason tell us in chat if it was particularly good or bad. But uh, overall, it seems like a card that's a role player in that deck. Yeah. The last one is one that I'm the most excited about. Obviously. Yeah, this is the one I think was, even though his deck did not perform, his deck was scary. I was his only win. Uh, he was one in six, uh, but he totally top decked Heart of the Card me out in that win, too. Uh, he was on the ropes. Well, in the one game I saw uh, that he played against Mason on stream was that Wish was incredibly powerful, finding that Tendrils of Agony yeah. uh, and just crushing it out. It was, it was in really cool, and it was a card that very few other cards in Magic could have been replacing it. Yeah, so I think the NVRD, this is going to be, outside of Karn, probably the best mm -hmm. of the Wish cards. And it may be even better than Karn, just because it can get anything, right? Like I think it's a chance that Burning Wish is still better, just because it gets most of the cards you want, and it's one cheaper. just gets instant sorcery, right? Just gets sorceries. Just gets sorcery. Correct. I mean, yeah, I think that's... No, I think that makes this better, right? I mean, does that ability to get... Artifact hate's really powerful, right? That's like, fair. Go grab a defense grid. Go grab something that just shuts people down. Like, even in a Karn deck, running this as, your, as a second ability to go get those things, right? It seems pretty powerful. Because um, you're in a Karn deck, you're already drafting that heavy um, sideboard cards anyway. You're already grabbing all those. So if I have two ways to get that, um, to go get that defense grid or go get that... Um, uh, Null Rod, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's really powerful. So I think that this is probably better than Burning uh, because it's it fits in more decks. I yeah, think in the... I that. There are decks that, like, Burning's going to be better, obviously. And I think that's that's the real question, right? Is like, I think that this will probably get taken by a fair deck yeah. or or it's a double copy you've taken 43rd by an unfair deck. But right. I think the unfair deck might pick the Burning over Wish. Right. That makes sense. So. Right. But I definitely, in my style of deck, right, in that where I, where I love the, the hate cards, I want to be able to go grab those things pretty easily. I've drafted Karn twice, right? I, I, you know, I think it's a phenomenal play. Uh, I think this is light years better and that it, it opens up any card, and that's just really nice. So That makes total sense. Uh, the, other, the next category we have is, is not cards that have been taken, right? So right. cards that are, have been released but we think are almost for sure going to see play. Right. Uh, and maybe not the next one, but at some point, yeah. Correct, yeah. And then this is a... The first one is one that we had on the list by itself for a long time because we couldn't find another card that was definitely going to see play, but we know Consider is going to see play. Yeah. Uh, especially if we look at the last online draft that we saw. Peak were, was taken. Peak, yeah, there were just so many of these one mana cantrips that were taken. So if, if Peak is getting taken, then Consider is almost assuredly going to see play. It's almost a universally better opt. Uh, it just has like a, it has a lot of uh, flexibility and it has a lot more synergies with the graveyard, which is pretty impactful, especially in the unfair decks. Yep. So I mean, this is a lock. Um, foils of this are going for about five bucks right now. It's seen you know being talked about in a lot of formats and see starting to see play already in those. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you know some people are saying it's better than preordain. Uh, you know. Interesting. Uh, the next one is an interesting one, right? So the next card was, was when I was I was looking through for my list. I was like, man, there's just not a lot, and I, I don't think this one's good enough. 
And then I started looking at this deeper, and I realized, this one's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Why is this one good enough, Mark? Well, see, there's this fancy card that gets taken in second or third, and maybe should be taken in first, depending on who you talk to. Yeah. And that's Time Vault. So Teferi is another enabler for Time Vault, just like, the pre just like uh, what is the five mana one uh, that's not Teferi? Te uh, Tezzeret. The original, Tezzeret, thank the original you. original Tez. Tezzeret obviously can tutor the Time Vault, but... Which is also, a double, right? Absolutely. Uh, but the Teferi being able to just untap your Time Vault means that if you do happen to have them both in the game, you win. Teferi also has some utility outside of that. You're right. That, uh, I think one of the big parts of it is the utility outside of that, or the ability to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's just leave the ultimates out of it. They're not, you know, they're nope. pretty irrelevant in, in VRD, I think. I've seen them happen, but it's not common enough. Uh, but, you know, actually, it is relevant maybe after you... Um, you know, get your time vault going for a couple turns. It gives you, uh, uh, but uh, it gives you this uh, beautiful ability to untap stuff, and also occasionally just tap some of their stuff down so you can get through with an attacker. Even um, I do not that those cute. decks run a lot of attackers. I think it's cute that you uh, that you think the ultimate's going to get used when the ultimate literally has no effect once you have a time vault. Going. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you're feeling generous, you want to hand back right. a turn. Uh, yeah. and that'd be fun. Touche. Touche. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it does play with Time Vault. It has some up upside utility other than that. Um, and a lot of the Time Vault decks are already playing white, so it's the cost of throwing this in versus something like a, a Rel Zarek. Uh, most, I don't think Time Vault decks in general want to be running red, right. uh, whereas blue kind of fits really nicely in the control in the control deck you already want to have. They're already like, in blue anyway. Like blue like our, our Time Vault deck last time was blue-white, yep. and this would have been really great in there for them. So. Absolutely. So I think this is this is assuredly. Yeah. The next one is one that was available and wasn't taken. And uh, this, this is somewhere between almost for sure and probably. We're going to go with almost for sure. Because someone's going to do it at one point. Yep. And it will probably be this guy right here. I, I really hope. As yeah. soon as I get to play, <laughs> as soon as he the cards. Throw me an Aluren and you got an Asarak. Asarak. Yeah. And you can, uh, you can have a great time. Um, obviously, the, the infinite combo here is you... You never uh, go through the tomb. Correct. You, you have Aluren already in play. And then you drop Asarak for free, uh, and you go through the Lost Mine of Fendelver, gaining infinite life and dealing infinite damage. Yeah. So. Or is it infinite bounded by the number of cards that you have in your deck. Oh, interesting. You have to draw a card each time. The last, the last room draws a card each time. Okay. So you're bounded by the cards in your deck. So I run, I run dungeons in uh, Commander. So <laughs> that's funny. I, I'm well aware that they're bounded by cards, part. But yeah, so you're bounded by cards. But there's other ones that you can go through as well, and you're going to kill them. I mean, no one's gaining that much life in VRD, so yep. you're you're 90 percent likely going to kill them. You can gain a bunch of that life, and then make you both lose a bunch of life as well by going yeah. through the other dungeon. So it's it's probably uh, you can probably have like 10 cards left in your library and still be okay to win. Right. So, and people are taking life anyway from fetches and other things like that. Sure. And you're yeah. alluring, you're swinging to something, cavern harpies, you know, whatever. Yeah. I I don't know if, cavern harpy is great. I don't know if mana fixing can support the three to four <laughs> color alluring that you need to be running for Probably that. not. But, yeah. Which I think is one of the problems with the alluring deck. I um, agree. Yeah. I think it's mostly mana. It's, right. it's, if you had access to infinite mana, I think that it would be fine. Yeah. So, next category, probably. Yeah. These are ones that we think might see play, but it won't necessarily yeah. uh, be a lock for it. And if, if they don't show up at all ever, that's not a, necessarily a surprise. But like, if they showed up, I, I'm, I'd be like, yeah, that's a solid pick. You know, these are the cards I would normally just tell you, no, probably not. And then the the categories after this are the ones I would just say no every right. single time. Uh, so the first one on this list, portable hole. Yeah. Right. Tell me why you think this is good. This okay, is a so one I mean, artifact. This is we've discussed before, right? Like this is a low CMC thing, right? I think this is good. The same reason I said Wither Bloom Command was the best of the new command cycle. Mm -hmm. Right, because Wither Bloom Command, Wither Bloom Command was extra good because it always blew, had something to blow up, and it um, did more. Right, sure. but this is a tutorable as you're in an artifact deck. Um, it is, you know, that exile. It's an O-ring uh, that's going to have a lot of targets. Right, I can you drop Mox, I turn one, I drop this, I hit your Mox. I don't feel, you know, I'm not waiting for that. Right, um, it's a powerful effect um, on a lot of things, on Bob's, on. Uh, Snapcasters on Bitter Blossom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> any number of pieces that uh, see a lot of play. Dreadhorde Arcanist, Dragon Rage Channeler, Ragavan, um, and it's Pack, Pack Rat's three, right? Not two. Pack Rat costs three activate, okay, so yes. Not, not pack, no, three to, is it two to cast or three to cast? Uh, Pack Rat costs two to cast. So Pack Rat, right? The original Pack Rat. Yep. Um, you can get one of the copies right. if you can get it on time. Right, or if you can get the original, if they just drop it and pass. Correct, yeah. 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 So I think it's a flexible... The fact that it can hit any permanent, any non-land permanent, mm -hmm. is what makes this playable, right? I think it's a very, very solid pick. 
Um, Interestingly, Oblivion Ring has seen play 21 times. It's not a lot of enchantment hate in the format. True. And so there's more artifact hate, so that makes this a little worse than that. But yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of enchantment hate, right? Like, Oblivion Ring seems strong. It, it goes away forever for most decks. Mm -hmm. um, so this doesn't go away forever as easily because there's always some artifact hate, but I think it's good. Yeah, I can totally see it. Yeah. Next one on the list, Infernal Grasp. Yeah. So this is one I'd forgot on my list, and then Mark mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, that one was supposed to be there. It seems really good. I mean, it's like Terminate is a card that we, we see a fair amount, and that's a full two cost, uh, two mana. Yeah. So obviously, like, if Terminate seen play a couple times, it's still, like, this card should see play. Uh, yeah. Doomblade, I think, sees play, right? Right. It's just, um, again, we, we talked about last time, or two times ago, whatever, that removal suites are very um, flexible, right? I think the best way to think about removal is, other than a few key pieces, your swords and your paths, things like that, look at what's going on, and then play your removal out from there. Because of the amount of removal, if this never goes, I would not be surprised, right? But if you're in a mono black, you know, this seems better than a Doom Blade or a Terror because it hits, I don't care about two life, to be honest, right? Like, it's hitting everything. There's no, it's not like, oops, I can't hit black creatures or oops, I can't hit legendary creatures, um, you know, things like that. One that we don't have on the list that I think is because of the reason you just said is, uh, is and actually very close to this one, which is Power Word Kill. Uh, it, it, it's incredibly strong, but it can't hit things like Iona. It can't hit things like Gristle. That's why it wasn't on my list, right? Yep. Like, a lot of the big, big stuff... A, a lot of the stuff I really want to hit with that yeah. are reanimator targets. <laughs> it can't hit. Uh, Lightning Bolted. Uh, Shadowborn Apostles. That is infinite. Yep. Right? Yeah. You'd, you'd be allowed any number of Shadowborn Apostles. Draft one, get them all. Yep. So you could definitely do that deck. Uh, you have to somehow have six of them in play. Right. And... That's gonna to be tough, but I would love to see somebody draw it. This is this is why we're doing it. We're gonna see yeah. we're gonna see what happens. Uh, so the next, then oh, two more things. So the next one um, I'm higher on than Mark is, yep. but um, you know we we're putting it here as the probable. Uh, just because this type of card gets drafted, uh, and that is the updated faithful uh, faithful's looting. He returns the things that he stole, and he talks about faithful mending. Right, he's mending the wrongs. Uh, you're gaining two life, you're drawing two cards, and then you are discarding two cards. So instant speed, uh, looting with uh, flashback, and gain some life. I think the issue with this, as Mark mentioned to me in our discussions uh, prior to this, was the what deck wants this, right? Like, looting gets picked in the reanimator decks be in the red because they're already playing red, most likely. Right. But, um, you know, but I will say, I think a lot of times they're playing red because it gives them access to looting effects. I agree. Right? If they can play Esper Reanimator. Sure. And have access to this kind of effect through this or through some of these other things is that that might be a, a stronger strategy. I think red becomes the default. Now, the other thing is you're not competing for... Like, there's no competition for red, right? right? Like, you know, if you go try to go an Esper Reanimator, you're now competing for blue. Well, um, and, and you have to compete for blue, and you already have black that you're right. fighting over pretty hard. White is obviously nobody's... You're going to have one white draft at the table, maybe. Right. Uh, the, the interesting comparison to this Faithful Mending card is actually the white-red card uh, they have to discard first. This card was really recently put, uh, printed that you also gained two life. I don't remember that one. It's really bad. Okay. Uh, but, but it's the same kind of idea. I, I think this card will see play. I think you're totally right. Somebody will try it. I think it's going to be bad. Uh, it's card disadvantage. Right, well, this card, here's why someone's going to try this, right? We always have, you know, we, we, we bring in a variety of players, and some of those players have a much deeper knowledge than others. Yep. And so, and that, that's not a slight against some of those other players, right? This is a hard format to have a, a deep knowledge of, right? Um, but you're always going to end up with a player that drafts a few of the newer cards because they that's their card memory. Yeah. Right. So this card is going to have... A, a better card memory that people are going to recall it. Um, it's going to yes. be on people's mind, and I think that's where this will end up being kind of picked at, right? I think you're pretty spot on. The card I was thinking of was a Thrilling Discovery, by the way. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's good. I don't think people should play it. But mm, sort of. I mean, you did draw three. I mean, yeah. it's Cathartic Reunion. Uh, you yes, you, you discard two cards and draw three. Is cathartic Reunion an instant. Cathartic Reunion is a sorcery. So we discovered earlier, we, we had some conversations about these effects, and Cathartic Reunion has been drafted twice, or three times, uh, in reanimator five decks. Times. Five times. In reanimator decks almost every time. Uh, one deck was kind of an odd one that we found. But it was, so yeah, I mean, that red-white one, it, that's playable. I mean, Cathartic Reunion is playable, that's playable, right? 
Uh, two colors is hard. I think a lot two of times that the, the, the dredge or reanimator decks are right. uh, are actually just two colors. Right. Um, that makes it tough for sure. Hyphen, I like that idea. I think that I love that idea. Hyphen, I think we actually do have uh, we have a bot hanging out in the channel in addition to Ninth Seed that can tell us about a card. I forget what it's called. Is it card? I don't know. This is yeah. There we go. Look at that. Uh, so you, you you can post and have uh, have MTG bot talk to you as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, the the thing that we're using to display the card on the screen is just me typing into a computer. So. Right. Just scryfall. Yep. All right. The last card is uh, in this probably slot is rules. Is our rule change dependent? Right. True. Um, the snow covered uh, change makes this playable. We're kind of leading the uh, kind of leading the witness here. Yeah. So hopefully somebody tries it. Right. Because it makes one the snow change makes one other card playable. Ooh. Faceless Haven. Faceless. Haven. So face the table, let's talk about this card first. It's right. a snow land. It obviously needs other snow lands before it can right. become a creature. But once you have four snow lands in play, it becomes a changeling, it. right? And the reanimating it, the key to this is there's other lands that become angels, but those lands cost five, right? Yeah. Like the blue white uh, colony. Yes. It so costs five. Fine. That's a lot. Three, though, is pretty reasonable. Um, so if, if the snow lands makes this pl possible, then we go to the Book of Exalted Deeds. So what happens is you turn it into, you have to have six mana, you turn the Faceless Haven into a creature, then use this, and it, they don't have immediate removal for it. Yep. Um, it goes back to being a land, and let's be honest, there's only, you know, the one person has the Wasteland, one person has the Strip Mine, maybe one person, yeah, seven kind, right, hyphenated. So it's expensive. Um, but, you know, there's only a couple of land destruction that really see play. Um, maybe uh, someone has Vindicate. You don't need seven, because you don't need to have the land be untapped. Oh, that's true. So you can use it to do it itself. So. Yeah. But but yeah, no, it's it's perfectly fine. It relies on them not having instant speed removal. It relies on them not having a wasteland. Right. You can do Vault 2 and make it even cheaper. Correct. Yep. Uh, so so the, there's there's some redundancy. I don't think this card's a lock, but I think that somebody will try it at some point. Again, because once again, it's, it's a relatively new combo. We've seen it a bunch of places. Right. Uh, and somebody will want to try it. It's a cool, cool opportunity. Yeah. And I mean, and you're going to, unless... And you can draft it late enough yes. that people aren't going to have the sideboard slots hammered out for it, right? Like, I think if you're doing this, you can draft this, swing, swing this in the last couple picks, and people aren't necessarily going to have the sideboard slots locked out. So you're really only going to be, like, yeah, maybe the sinkhole, maybe the list with sinkhole, uh, the wasteland uh, strip mine deck. A couple people are going to have out against you, but some people you're just going to lock it up against, and they're going to sit there and look at you funny and pick up the cards, right? Yep. Uh Vindicate, of course, would be another. I do like how Ninth Seed is throwing a little shade at the St. Lotus, uh, where Wasteland has been drafted 49 times of the 50 legal, uh, usually in eighth round. The one time it wasn't was this last VRD. Yeah, we, it just was completely missed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there, there are there are lots of ways to answer this uh, that do see play. So I don't think it's necessarily like you're going to build your whole deck around this combo, but I think that you're going to be playing some other cards. You probably have snow synergies, and then you throw this card in as a as a 45th pick. Right. So. And maybe even leave it in the board if you have snow synergies, and then you bring it in. Sure. It went, you know. Yeah, you bring it in against the deck that doesn't have answers. Right. So uh, yeah, but, uh, hyphenated pointed out. You know, blue has he has the good balance answers too and stuff. So. Yep. But anyway, I still think it's a it has a good chance of seeing play at some point. Yeah. Like we see people drafting. We see Alec every single time trying to draft his uh, his elf combo deck, and uh, if, if he can make that work, then I believe somebody can make the Book of Exalted deeds happen. Exactly. So next category, what's this one? We are maybes. These are outside shots. These are cards that we look at and we say, huh, you know, okay, maybe. Some of us, some of us look at them and think that. Yeah. Well, hey, you said you gave a maybe on two of these. So you, you shut, actually three of four of these. You agreed with me on four of these. You shut your whore mouth, sir. <laughs> no, these are the, these are the Hagen fun ones all, quite often, right? No, he's right. These are the ones where I have a little more generous uh, thinking, but a lot of times my generous thinking pays off. True. So Sometimes you say that pathways will see play and then you force everyone to take them. I didn't happens. force nothing. I picked a pathway. It was good for my deck. All of a sudden, everybody grabbed pathways, right? <laughs> So the first card on this list is one that I did suggest. Uh, it's the new swords to plowshares, obviously, right? Yeah, the the baby swords. So, yeah, it's, it's something. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's particularly incredible. It does take out planeswalkers for two mana. Uh, giving somebody extra card is a big deal, but like it's pretty unconditional removal. If the, if the drafts are going heavy planeswalkers, it's pretty good. Yep. But there also is already a lot of. We talked about last time. There's a lot of those new ones. Uh, there's the blue, like the 
there's a blue white one that we talked about I think or a black white one um oh the, yeah the, the black white new vindicate kind yeah, of problem yeah maybe. The, yeah there's the new yeah there's there's so many so yes again it's just fractured, heavy heavy fractured something? fracture something fracture just fracture oh is it just fracture might just be fracture man these names they're using all the great names yeah fractured to yeah. destroy this card is super confusing to me. But anyway, it, right. anyway, yeah, there's lots of ways to answer Planeswalkers. This one is far more flexible that you don't have to just have a naturalize attached to it. You instead get to have a Swords of Plowshares right. attached to it. Yeah, or, not, or just a Destroy, because it's not Swords. It yeah. should have been. Ooh, yeah. Gideon of the Trials uh, instead of Book is very, is very interesting. Um, uh, the next one up is... A, I, it's a good card. I think it's a Brandon Curry card. Yeah, is, this feels like a Curry card. Uh... Oh man, I gotta learn how to spell. It's the real trouble. Siphon Insight. Card t I don't. Did they fix? Is this unbanned on MTGO yet? Did they fix that yet? I I can't. Keep it was an MTGO that. bug where uh, when you cast it, your opponent couldn't take any more turns, evidently, and well, they had to ban it. That doesn't make better. Yeah, it, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this feels like a Curry card. Uh, I would also draft it. Then probably also a Cody Owen card to be honest then as well. So, uh, so the defense of this card, the reason why I think it might even be in the probable camp is that it nullifies a lot of the top deck tutors in this format, is yeah. that you can instant speed respond to a vampiric tutor or and all of a it. sudden just take their card. It seems incredibly strong to me. Uh, it, plus, like, the flashback cost is just incredibly low. Like, yeah. the, the cost of playing this in your deck is pretty small. Uh, and worst case scenario, you just grab a land. And yeah, play I mean that's that's what that's the play, it's, that is play not cast is what right. to me makes this a strong strong maybe right that I can at a minimum grab a land if you're hitting you know you always get those lucky things you hit a mox yep. um, you, you know you hit a combo piece but that's all fa that's magic Christmas land uh, you get to take out a tutor but you're almost always going to get some kind of value out of it. Well, and, and it's not like you have to it's not like a red card where you have to use the next turn. Right, you can just. Exile Anytime. some six drop and all right. of a sudden just like be ready to drop a grave titan on them. Exactly. Exile there. a counter spell. Sure. And then play it at any time, right? Later on. I mean yeah. And the mana requirement that they throw on all these cards now where you don't have to actually figure out how to get the mana for it. Yeah. I mean like it's so easy. If you if you have a mox and you turn one this and just exile like a counter spell, I mean that's I think there are better things to do on turn one, but yes, I'm, I'm I mean up. if I don't have better, if I have sure. land mox, you know, that seems good. Uh yeah, this, this card is probably much better than it may be, actually, looking at yeah. it and talking through it now. Yeah, I think the card's really good. Yes, I agree. Uh, the next one is an interesting one. Uh, if this next one was an elf, I think it would be much, much higher. Yes. Um, but it is not an elf, it is a human. And I don't think that there's a human deck out there um, in BRD land. Oh, hyphenated soul and lightning bolt. See? Yeah, there we go. Yep. Um, yeah, that's true. Praetor's Grasp. Praetor's Grasp is a little bit better. Uh, but this card's a two for one every single time. And it's time. instant. Yep, instant speed and two for one. Yeah. And yeah, it's one mana cheaper. So anyway, Augur Bottom. Uh, this card, uh, this card so throws it's you back to Oracle, throws you back to Corsair, throws, right. but it also has this other ability. So you lose the land. So this one, you obviously want to be in a creature deck because you want the Coven to happen, right? Yeah. Um, so, but in those green creature decks that, that might run it, in like the uh, Alex uh, Vizier deck. Yes, this right? the Vizier deck is exactly the, the, where This is where this. you run this in the Vizier deck. Yep. Um, so, Corsair sees play. Uh, this has got a little lower of a butt than Corsair. Corsair is a four butt, right? Corsair is, no, I think Corsair is also, let's double check, let's pull it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think it's also three. Uh, Corsair of Crufix, of course, is the card we're talking about. No, you're right. It's no, a, it's a four. four. Yeah. So I mean, this one dodges lightning bolt, but right. I don't know. I feel like the the life t the the toughness matters far less in this format than it does in something like Legacy. Or Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I think this card is. I said if this was an elf, this would be an almost for sure lock in, right? Yep. Um, but the but as is, it, it it doubles as a courser, which is good. And then has this nice upside if you're in a creature deck when you can pull off the coven that you're going to get to cast your creature spells from the top too. So I really think it's home is um, the um, like that deck which I tried before, and then Al tried to a bunch to a little better success. Yep. Uh, it, it would this would have been close actually in my deck even uh, last time my green black deck. Sure. So um, I don't think I would have taken it, but it would have been close. Yeah, I don't think this card's good, but I, I can totally see... I think an Alex deck, it would be good yeah. once you kind of commit to doing that. Uh, it I seems mean, fine. Yeah. If you're running Corsair, there's no reason... I, I I think unless you are... Honestly, like, the thing about, like, if I'm in that creature deck and I'm, I want this effect, I want this over Corsair. I think unless you're an Enchantress, I agree with you. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I want the Silver Corsair in that creature deck just for the slight upside because I don't care about the life that much. Yeah. No, that tracks. Um, you know, the only way I care about the life is maybe if I, I guess I have Fast Bond. I mean, um, to counteract it. Mm -hmm. But. All right. So the next one, uh, also a strange spelling. Let's see if I can find it. It's not Draenei's Magistrate. That's that card is a whole different. We're gonna be talking about that deck coming up here in a little bit. Hyphenated as a as a pos as a possibility. So, uh, how do you spell this uh, card? This is D E N N. Ah. Denic. I don't know how to rebound handwriting. Yeah. So Denic Pious Apprentice. Obviously, this is going to be one that's going to be hard for Scryfall to show to us, but the front side is, I think, what you're going to want 90% of the time, and then the back side is a nice upside. Right. So the front side, if you're in kind of the blue-white bears, right, uh, this acts as a similar thing to a rest in peace type thing. Um, you're just cutting off graveyards. It can't be the target. Now, you're only cutting off target things, so... They can still reanimate, or uh, not reanimate, they can still do unearthy type things, right? Mm -hmm. um, abilities from graveyards. But it is, uh, you think about Ground Seal? So. Yes, yeah, because Ground Seal I know has seen some play, and I've played a lot of Ground Seal in Legacy. Right. Because it sees play in Tess and, and so, yeah. Ant sometimes. This was a Ground Seal on a 2-3 lifelink body. And that the lifelink body, that's pretty yes. solid, right? I mean, that... that and then you get a little bit of upside, right? Like, the flip side's not... So I think if you just go back, you can hit... Or you just it's hit Transform, yeah. yeah. The, the backside is not why you play it, but right. it's, it's a totally but, fine card. But once it's gone, it's fine, right? You you for you get a three two flyer, and when one of your creatures dies, you get to investigate, right? Yep. Um, uh, it's it's any card, not just yours. Okay, yeah. any creature, card. creature, yeah, into a graveyard. So, again, like this isn't why you play the card, but a little yep. bit upside, a little bit of upside. There are some of the disturb cards that you could be like, oh, I want to try to mill it and reanimate it from my graveyard, and this isn't that one. No. But if you just want to be in a blue-white kind of beatdown deck that messes around with your opponents, like if you're Dallas playing... Dahlia's and... Yeah, if, if, you're, uh, if you're John Ryan Hamilton and not a coward, you can totally draft this card. So, right. Uh, next one. Uh, the next one is... Uh, <laughs> the next one goes into our evergreen discussion of... Will Enchantress ever be a thing? You know, somebody's uh, going to do it at some point. I don't. I, I, I give up hope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, because the question on this card is like, you already have glimpse, right? Um, not glimpse the unthinkable. Gl uh, glimpse of glimpse of nature. Nature, right? Uh, glimpse of nature gets picked. Uh, how many times has it been picked? Let's find out. Uh, I mean, it's been a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those that if you're an elves, you probably take it. <laughs> uh, other than that, I don't know if it's uh, it's great. So yeah, it's been five times out, right. of, out of 50. Right. But it's, it's round 23. It's a late one. It's only that deck that wants it. Right. So you're getting the extra... Um, you're, you're at the extra cost for this, but it also triggers off enchantments, yep. which is nice. So it's acting as an extra enchantress and has a little bit of flashback. Um, the flashback does not matter for this card. It always matters. <laughs> There's a chance it will A little matter. bit of upside always... Again, how many times do we say it? These games either go really long, really fast, or really long, right? It, it's rarely the middle ground. There's going to be a game where the flashback matters. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I just think that's yeah. not why you play the game. Right. Uh, uh, but but my, my, I don't think this will see play as a replacement for Glimpse, because I think that Elves probably is, is like packed enough. But I could be wrong. Oh, that is true. This does draw Ooh, off tokens. So That's a really good call. Yeah, uh, yeah so, so I did not realize that that, right. that distinction... Um, so this, this, is a, this is a strip comes into play rather than a uh, cast. So I, I forgot about that during the list. I remembered it during spoiler season. but It's kind of a question of whether Elves is willing to go into a third color or not. Because, um, I mean, you obviously run some... You already, is it Quirion Ranger and things like that that force you into uh, into being able to support multiple colors? Right. Uh, I think it's Quirion Ranger. Uh, if I can spell Quirion. Uh, but I, I just don't know... Uh, no, Quirion Ranger untaps things. What's the one mana morph creature? That, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You play that card, and right. it, it allows for you to tap itself and another card to uh, to generate mana of any color. So because you already play that that way, you can potentially make it. Uh, so hyphenated brings up uh, my favorite of the Chandras uh, as as a, as a potential for a cheap card. And this one's not necessarily the cheapest of cards, but it does produce a bunch of tokens that you don't care if they survive or not. No. Uh, so if you want to be running three mana Chandra here, my right. girl can make you two creatures uh, and draw you two cards <laughs> off of it. And he says, I'm the one of that. That's <laughs> doing cr crazy stuff over here. Right? Like in this three mana, three mana Chandra <laughs> Rite of Harmony deck, it seems like it's a red of your life. Seems exactly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, but this card, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to be shocked if it finds a spot. Yeah, if you want a sixth Enchantress, this card can fill that niche and also be a lot of other things. Yeah. Uh, or if you want to splash around in white with your elves. The deck. tokens thing does probably push it up a little bit. 
I, I still don't know what deck wants it, yeah. but I feel like there's an Enchantress deck that could want uh, an extra copy of Enchantress. All right, so the next one is... Um, so the Flash deck has been drafted twice. Cody Owen drafted it here yep. in 4 or 5. Uh, and it was a deck that even Elaine said felt much better than his record. Like, yes. it was it was scary to play against. Didn't um, he run that one that one terrible, like, mutate creature or something? Yeah, like, I mean, he, creature. he had a couple of funky ones that, yeah. I, you know, like, you know, the shark that I, I talked That's him right. into running. So... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, not Shark Typhoon. I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah, whatever. But, uh... But this card is, and then Hyphenated drafted it to, uh, in the most recent online, to pretty good success. Uh, yes, Shamble Shark. There nice. you go. Uh, uh, to pretty good success as well, right? So this is a, I, this is an outside of that deck, right? It's a, you know, it's a flying flash creature. The upside is later in the game. <laughs> Look at that fish crab. <laughs> Look at that Shamble Shark, baby. Go, yeah. Cody. Uh, he drafted it. <laughs> Uh, the upside is later in the game you get to use it to protect maybe your own stuff from removal yep. or um, in weird instances phase out some of their blockers so you can swing that last that last bit through and I think in that deck that's relevant right like phasing out their blockers so uh, to get that last bit through uh, and when, the, when they phase back so if you do this on the end of their turn they phase back in on your next turn right they phase back in on their next turn their next turn yeah it's, it's at the beginning if it has not if it's been if it is phased out, before you're on tap step, right. then it phases in. So, like, you can do this at the end of their turn, and they won't have blockers, and you can, you know, swing through. Uh, wait, if you... Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the the place where I see this card is in a Spirits deck, in a blue eye Spirits deck that uh, I think is, like, on the verge of already playable. Like, there have been a lot of those, and I think that this set gives us this one. It probably gives us some more we aren't thinking of right, right. now. Uh, but there's just a lot of those kind of cards, like... That are the cheap, interactive, flashy cards. And they're hard to interact with. Right. Right. Uh, humans, I really wish was a playable tribe. I think that VRD is really hurt by the fact that you have to take the five color lands. So it ends up being kind of like there was a uh, there was a, uh, a Northwest VRD Shotgun Lotus tournament where somebody drafted uh, they drafted Naya Naya Zoo and they ran zero basics and they only had five sideboard cards. So I think humans would fall into that same trap where you end up drafting a really solid first game and then you just get hated out because you only have five cards to board in. So Spirits, I, worry, I think, is much closer than humans. Oh, I fully agree. Yeah. yeah. Trying to play more than two colors is hard. Trying to play more than three is nearly impossible. And I think what pushes Spirits is they have a lot of those things like sack it and counter a spell yep. or cost more to target me. Right? They have a lot of those effects and that makes it uh, I think a lot more playable. Look, if every land was a city of brass, I think humans is better than Spirits. But I think that in a world where you have to draft lands, Spirits is substantially better. That makes sense, I have needed. And that's why this is way, way down here in the maybe list. Yep. Um, you know, it is just, it's a card. Out of the cycle, out of this big fl flashy cycle, it was the only one I thought that had even an outside chance. So. Ooh, good question. What is the best tribe? I gotta go with elves. I gotta go with elves. Um, we've been told by Mason that the Chicago group sees Eldrazi a lot. And as if we haven't seen it, sure. maybe the waste change will flip that up. Uh, but I think for tribal, I think elves is the best. Um, yeah, tribal mocks it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess... Uh, Karn makes constructs. Maybe yeah. that's the best tribe. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then the last part is a, a theory discussion more than anything. Sure. Right? It's a brief one. Um, and that is the power of modality in VRD. Okay. So, so this one kind of goes to the new design philosophy that's been coming with the introduction of Arena and a little bit before that. Right. Where magic has been pushed to a best of one perspective. You have fewer just like rip out of the sideboard, tear their tear their hand apart kind of cards, and you have a lot more cards that have flexibility that aren't quite as pushed. Good point. Level. Good. Um, and I think that these modal cards are pretty powerful in VRD. So Return to Nature has been picked five times. Okay. Uh, this is a solid thing, right? Um, I don't mind main decking this because I'm almost always going to have it against something. And even though I'm not main decking it, I, it's very flexible coming out of the board. Yes. Right? And I think that's the power of the modal cards. Well, the last couple sets has given us several, right? So I want to kind of theory talk about these cards. Do, do the modal cards make car, a price that may otherwise be not playable more playable, right? So let's take... Oh, see, there we go. I have anything to the third or fourth best distance champ, right? Let's take this one, for example. Um, you find the villain's lair from AFR. God, those card names. I love them. They're they're so they're so theme. Right. Yeah, no, right. they're, they're they're wonderful. So, w would a three mana counter spell see play that does nothing else see play at all? Absolutely not. 
No. I mean, even did, one, we just saw Dissolve has been taken two times of 46. And Dissolve Exiles, right? Dissolve Exiles. Right. Um, so probably not. You know, I mean, very li- unlikely, the, uh, three mana counters play two. Does a three mana draw two, then discard two at instant speed see any play? Absolutely not. I don't think it sees play at two mana. Well, I mean, it, it, it doesn't. I, I don't. I don't think it would. Okay. I I think that like. Well, frantic search gets you untapped though, so that's yeah. I think unfair. I mean, frantic search has the unfairest. I'm trying to think of any that are not <laughs> frantic, right? That come close. In blue, I mean, the, the closest thing in blue are the ones we were talking through. Um, or sorry. The red ones. The closest ones we've seen are the red ones, right? right? So, but if you staple those two things together, right, does that make it playable? And I don't know. I don't. I don't know that it's like maybe it, it leads me. I've been thinking about these for Commander more, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, it, at a minimum, like I get to draw cards, right? Like, that, you know, or do things. So there's a couple of these I want to talk about. I talk about this one. This is one of those. Ooh, this is a good comparison. Archmage's Charm that Hyphenated points out is actually a one that I think is pretty close. Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's, again, one of these like new design philosophies where it's... Uh, I, I drafted it in a really terrible deck uh, that was a, the no-sleep deck is what I right. had defense for it. Um, but yeah, this card was very good in that deck. Right. Uh, this card does have the advantage of being card advantage when you right. do cast You don't get a deck. discard, right? And that's right. different. But yeah, I think that is a comparison. That's a good one. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, so let's talk about Cathartic Pyre. Cathartic Pyre. So this is another new one. Uh, this is from Midnight Hunt. So when you say Cathartic Pyre, all I can think is Harvest Pyre, and I'm uh, so excited for that combo to come back. That strange <laughs> Boros. Um, uh, yeah. If this hit players two, I would think this would be a much much higher. Agreed. Level, right. Yeah. I think. Again, surely so we were we were discussing early on these draw these red draw and discard effects, right? So we looked at Cathartic Reunion. It's been drafted five times. We looked at. Um, th- not thrill of possibility. That's newer. Um, the red one. Um, the, vo- the one with Sark and Vol on it. We've oh, a Tormenting Voice. Tormenting Voice. It's been drafted twice, I think we used to figure it out. Uh, Two or three tor- times. Yeah, it's less than Cathartic Reunion, but still a lot. Two times, Two times. right. Um, so this card here, right? Like, I get a removal for two at instant speed, and or I get this draw, and discard up to two, then draw that many, right? So it's not even at lock. That seems playable to me, right? Like, this is a very flex card that, see- that I think people will overlook, but I think seems really, really playable because of that modality. This, this one is card disadvantaged by comparison to the other ones, so I think right. that it's substantially worse. I, I, I basically I think that the other ones uh, you are always happy to play. Uh, this one is going to be a I really need to get this creature put away in order to uh, in order to get my reanimator to happen. Right. But, but like it, this is mostly getting played for the for the deal damage. All right, and then two more of these in this theory conversation sure. um, are you find a cursed idol. This is the least likely of this group, I think. This this one feels like it's like a one ability that last ability. If this so was weak. an instant, it would go m- up much higher. Sure, but it's a sorcery, right? Yeah. Um, but so l- l- let's basically talk about for this one. I think you got to think about well, what does create a treasure and venture mean? It means give them mana and either scry one. Yep. Um, each player loses a life, or you gain a life. So that's what the third ability basically says. Because you're not probably going to venture more than once, yep. right? So the third ability says, I gain a mana for the future. And I either scry one, lose a life, or gain a life. Yeah, this this one feels pretty weak. Right. Uh, one uh, that's an older one, but still obviously in the same idea. Hyphenated points out, Abraid. Right. Abraid is obviously really good. You see, it's seen play roughly half the time since it's been printed. It's a late round pick, but it's always good. Yeah. And then the last one I think is, is super interesting is you find some prisoners. Uh, All right. So, similar to Brave, we get to destroy an artifact, yep. right, at instant speed. Uh, and then we get this other, X out the top three cards of target opponent's library, choose one of them until at the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So you can do your land drop for the next turn, it is play, not cast, right? So you can steal one of, your exile on them no matter what, um, you're getting rid of 300 cards of a 40 card deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you can get a land drop, or you can play one of the things you've got, um, either this turn or next turn, right? Again, that seems pretty potent, uh, especially with the flexibility. Um, that right. I, I have this, I want to destroy an artifact, or I've got two mana at the end of turn, I, they're artifact heavy, let's rip three cards off the top and either set up my land, extra land drop, uh, deny them a land drop, or see you know see what we get, spin the wheel a bit. Um, the, these kind of cards I think are really interesting. I think that they will all see play. I think they actually are better in the kinds of decks that people don't draft as often when they're new to the format. So I think that like 
you can run this in your main deck and you have game one play against lots of things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can bring in your bangers from the sideboard. So I think that like top skill drafters might actually take these, even though they're lower power than a lot of the more focused decks are right away. If you see a field that has, for instance, three decks that really rely on artifacts for their win cons, you might play, you find some prisoners because in game one, if you're not playing against those, you, it's not a dead card in your deck, but you do have like, you do have a hit that you can do with it and you can swap it out for one of your really good cards. Yeah. But people really like to draft overdraft cards and not have enough sideboard cards. So I think that this kind of relies on somebody who is good enough to draft too few cards for their main deck and they want to have this card to kind of fill both those slots of a half sideboard card, but also half main deck card. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know. I, these are ones I've been thinking a lot about. I don't necessarily think they, you know, these are going to rock the world. Yep. Um, but I think it's an interesting conversation, especially with what the how you framed it at the beginning is this seems to be a shift in design that they're liking at this point, this, these modal cards. Yep. Um, so I think that we maybe should start rethinking about sometimes these power level effects and ask ourselves is, you know, what is what is the how much do we value the flexibility? Um, of those cards. And again, I, you guys are right. I think certain decks value them more. Reactionary decks, non-linear decks, right? Things like that. Um, but I, I think that these, you know, the, I think these group offer a really nice possible insight to a different way to think about VRD and start thinking a little more about the modality. And I think, you know, Hyphen had talked about it, he likes Return to Nature a lot. And I, I think that shows uh, that they are, right? A, a, a pretty potent, um, a potentially potent group. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I think that there, there's a lot of interesting uh, interesting ways in which these cards are going to be used. Uh, but I, I really do hope that we see people taking more targeted sideboard cards, and I think that these cards might actually push us that direction, right. which would be cool to see. Right. Um, but yeah, so next, uh, next VRD is coming Saturday. up on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, probably going to be starting around 10 o'clock Central Time. We haven't locked in the exact time yet, but... Uh, starting a little bit later this time to hopefully be able to uh, help out people on the West Coast as well as uh, as well as well let it run a little later um, and get people some sleep. Uh, so hopefully Brandon doesn't have to show up with three hours of sleep this yeah. time. Well, he showed up as good sleep last time. That's true. That's true. But normally, right. I mean, it's Brandon. He's never right. going to sleep that well. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Hoping to see you all on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again and probably do some breakdowns afterwards. All right. Thanks for tuning in, Al. Take Bye. care.